and welcome to Circle Church. My name is Becca Broussard. I just wanted to thank you for joining us in worship today and invite you to welcome one another in the comments section below. Just a few quick announcements before we get started. Our Ladies Book Club is going to meet again on July 19th at 6.30 Central Time through Zoom. We have been discussing a book titled My Testimony, His Heritage, which is a book that breaks down Psalm 119. So even if you haven't read this text, you're welcome to read Psalm 119 and join in on the discussion. We would love to see you there. And also, our Circle Church check-ins are still happening on Zoom at 6.30 Central Time every Thursday. Uh, we have a quick fellowship time and uh, Bible study and pray together. It's really good to see one another and meet with one another since we still haven't been able to meet in person. So we would love to see you there as well. I hope and pray that you're moved by the service today. And thanks again for joining us. Glory to God. So we invite you to worship with us this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're one in the spirit. We're going to blow the roof off of heaven this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega. Yeah. You're the beginning and the end. No. You're the same as the day to day. and Omega Yes you are You're the beginning and the end oh, You're the same as the day to day and forever And oh I praise your name I praise your name Hallelujah hey. Holy, holy You are worthy of my praise The beginning and the end, oh, oh, oh. you're the same as the day to day and forever. Oh, I praise your name, I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega, yeah. You're the beginning and the end, oh, oh, oh. you're the same as the day to day and forever.
and we bless your holy name, oh God. Yeah, we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your name. Woo, we lift your name high, God. High above every circumstance, high above every situation, high above every sickness. God, we lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Your name takes care of it all, God. Ah, you've left us with your name. You've left us with your blood, God. And we're going to exalt you, God. We're going to exalt you above everything. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is one you should all know. <laughs> We're celebrating the Savior this morning. Glory to God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Yeah. And I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah. And Lord, I love to sing your praises. So glad you're in my life, yeah. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you came from heaven to wave to show.
Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for dying. And thank you for rising again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Y'all didn't know we were sponsored by Sesame Street. Did you? <laughs> uh, man. Um, so, um, uh, Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch could not make an appearance today, but they sent their best to the family. Amen. Uh, so, we are about to, I think it's so. Uh, exciting to tag on to baby dedication to start this series talking about the coloring book um, and I think that a lot that um, and I want to get ahead of myself I'm gonna do the trap to do that a lot uh, for this talk but I feel like a lot of the things we need to learn about life we probably already learned in kindergarten mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that we learned really early on was how to color um, and it's so interesting and I'm trying to give y'all the sermon before I preach it so we can catch on real quick. Everybody knows what we talk about, okay? And so we talk about these three primary colors, um, and every color on the color wheel finds its origin in these three primary colors, all right? So um, red, yellow, and blue are the originators for every other color on the color wheel. Y'all learned Roy G. Bibb and all of that, and that's great, well, and fine. But every color finds its origin from these three colors. Y'all don't even see me coming. Here I am. Every human being made in the image of God finds its origin in the Godhead. Mm -hmm. i say that again. Every human being made in the image of God finds its origin in the Godhead, in God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So where's the text? I'm so glad you asked me. One of them is in Genesis chapter 1, starting verse 26 and 27. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, it'll be with you on the screen. Hear these words from the word. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So um, I, I don't want to spend too much time here. Have you ever had a chance to spend time with your immediate family and you look around at the family reunion or the family function and we are a multi ethnic church so it might be at a barbecue it might be at the lake house it might be over uh, backstrap it might be over leg quarters i don't know but if you look around sometimes you will see you know what i kind of look like my cousin but i can't stand them like hey, hey come on let's, let's talk like if you've been around your family you're like you know what i don't like that joker but i look a lot like him like and see here's the thing that's messy i'm about to be, be, be in our family he would say, you know what, you look just like Junior Lee, boy. And they say, well, is Junior Lee your daddy? Come on, y'all, come on. Y'all act like y'all ain't never heard that. But see, y'all don't want to have church. That's okay, though. But they'll, they'll look at you and say, you kind of look like so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and a lot of that has to come with, here it is, when you get around your family, is that even people that you don't like, you carry some of the same genetic makeup that they do. It's this one word. It's called DNA. You carry some of the same genetic makeup as they do. Here's what it means. It's deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, in short, DNA, is it up there? Um, DNA is this molecule that contains each person's unique genetic code. It holds the instructions for building the proteins that are essential for our bodies to function. Isn't that crazy? Let me say that again. It's a long molecule that contains each person's unique genetic code. It holds the instructions for building up the proteins that are essential for our bodies to function. DNA instructions are passed, watch this, from parent to child, <laughs> with roughly half of the child's DNA originating from the father and half from the mother. I'm preaching, y'all don't see me coming. Here it is, listen, what, what makes you uniquely you comes from who gave birth to you. Mm. What, what makes you, you, comes from where you have originated. Okay, so y'all don't want to pay attention. Let me say it like this way. Here's the structure of the DNA. I'm about to shout. DNA is a two-stranded molecule that appears twisted, giving its unique shape uh, referred to as the double helix. 
Each two strands has a long sequence of nucleotides or individual units. Okay, so you do the next slide. So here's a, a nucleotide label. You, you've got to um, help me, um, teachers in here, because you know I had a B minus in anatomy, but I passed. Actually, I'm, I'm lying, it was a C. Okay, um, and so it, we've got a phosphate group, we've got the sugar group, and we've got the nitrogen basis. God, um, the things, yeah, the, what holds the strands of DNA together is a unit of three. Wow. I don't want to help me preach. It's in your DNA, there are three primary units that hold you together. Man. In your genetic, God help me, in your genetic makeup, there are three primary units that hold the DNA together. What makes you uniquely you in your genetic makeup comes from these three primary units. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. The story of who you are is embedded in your DNA. The story of who you are is embedded in your genetic makeup. Now, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself for next week. We discuss more about what makes you uniquely you. But this is the goal in today. You can't really learn about you until you realize your genetic makeup. Yeah. Say that again. You can't really learn about you until you realize your genetic makeup. Let me come back to the family reunion. Have you ever been around people? And um, let me just say this way. Y'all, there are some things that come on the family um, that people end up struggling with. You got to pay attention. Uh, there's why some folk have to stay away from alcohol because they see the connection that happens with their family. That's why some folk need to stay away from talking to too many ladies. Y'all don't want to have a church up in here because it's connected to, to your uncle, whatever the name is, Jack or Jack Jr. Um, you you mm -hmm. catch the difference there. It's Jack or Jack Jr., you know. You got to realize that some of the stuff that your family struggles with may be connected unto to you are. If you look at David's lineage and you look at what Solomon had to deal with, it's no wonder Solomon had so many extra side. Oh, y'all don't want to have church because <laughs> his daddy um, had a problem too. Yeah. So what you've got to realize sometimes that some of the not just the positive things about your makeup, some of the negative things about your makeup, you will learn a lot better. Instead of us trying to sit down at our family reunion with our family and say, could you tell me a little bit more about, um, you know, what you did? No, tell me, tell me a little more about what you struggled with, because maybe you'll be able to teach me how to stay away from it. Yeah. We spend so much time talking about, well, this, no, no, no. Don't get to learn their name, learn their habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. learn, learn, learn how they grew. And so you understand a little bit more about yourself watching your family. Here's the problem. There are a lot of people who are trying to be in the body of Christ that keep talking to God. God, teach me more about me, and you know nothing about God. Mm -hmm. Come to the scripture, Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. I like that. Over the fish of the sea and all the hunters and the fishermen said, and over the birds of the heavens and all the hunters and the fishermen said, Amen. and over the livestock, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And nobody said amen to that because I will kill a roach on sight and a spider. <laughs> You know, I'm sorry, uh, uh, what's that, Peter, or whatever y'all call it. Um, verse 27, so God created man his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, we created them. We see from the beginning what we scholars communicate and believe, what we receive um, as Protestant Baptists as well, um, is this Trinitarian theology. We see Trinitarian theology from the book, from the jump. God starts speaking um, at a celestial conference uh, in the beginning. Um, as they're getting ready to, you know, we we making all types of stuff. We 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 got colors, you know what I'm talking about. We making trees, we making bushes, and make all other stuff. And then as we see all this stuff, and we say it's good, come on, Genesis chapter one. We get to verse 26 and said, all right, um, I need to call in a conference, maybe make a conference call real quick with the rest of the Godhead. And they said, you know what? Let us make man in our own image. Now, if you if you have questions about Bible, I have a question for um, excuse me, God, I when do we move from single to plural? What happened here? How do um you were just saying that God said it would be good, and now you're saying let us. I'm God, I'm confused. Because in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. 
It didn't say, in the beginning, God knew. Okay, y'all don't want to. God knew, made the heavens and the earth. And right here, we're learning Trinitarian theology. What do you mean by that? I'm so glad you asked me because this doesn't make sense to me because the mystery of the Godhead is that we are plural and singular all at the same time and not yet conflicting. It doesn't make sense to me. Welcome to theology, baby. Okay. God is still functioning and in complete control as one individual who serves in the Godhead. In the words of the Athanasian Creed, you should check it out. It's incredible. It says, we worship one God in Trinity, Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. That means God in his three roles of the Father, Son, and Spirit are co-equal in glory, co-equal in majesty, not confusing. Now what of them? They are all distinctly God and one being God. So you telling me that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are all the same and have existed from the foundations of the earth. Yes. But there are three uh, persons of the Godhead. Yes. In that plural. Yes. In that singular, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. That don't make sense. Yes. <laughs> Here's, hear me. If you are trying to grab your mind around this infinite principle that is so incredibly complex, the problem is, is that you're going to be trying to figure that out until you die. And by that time, when you die, you'll figure it out. (laughs) So how about we just have faith and believe that God has been and always will, always will be, and is continuing in his nature in these three distinct roles. And so him being that these distinct roles have very distinct meanings. Um, I'm trying to I'm not trying to bore you all the stuff that I like to talk about, but every human being has a divine birthmark. Every single person has been made in the image of God. The struggle is if we are people affected by the fall of man when Adam sinned and we are all sinners now, did that take away who we are when man sinned? I'm so glad that when one sinned, that it did not take away the divine imprint that God placed on every human being. Now, it affected us in how we relate to the Father. It affected us in our communication with God. But it did not take away the imprint of who we are. Now, here's the thing. But it really affected the relationship Y'all don't have church. Okay, let me do like this. Um, I don't know if y'all y'all pray for me. I, I still I'm still scared of my mom and my daddy. Um, I remember one time I'm so dumb. So imagine me trying to walk out of a room. I'm trying to walk out of this room right here. Okay, I'm trying to walk out of this door where the TV is on the very back of this wall. There was a mirror in my house. Me and my mama getting into a fight right here. You know, we, 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 you know, we get to it. I'm upset, blah, 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 blah. And so I walk off, okay? And I'm walking off and I'm talking uh, about my mama as I'm walking off because I'm mad. You know, we mumble on our break. Y'all know what we do. And I said a word I don't repeat, repeat in the sermon. Amen. And my dumb self forgot that there's a mirror on the wall and my mama can see my lips. Before I got out that door, she said, boy, come in. Um, and some furniture moved around. If you will. Um, but watch this. There was a break in relationship <laughs> uh, that we didn't exactly uh, get along as we should right after that. You know what I'm saying? There had to be some amends and some reconciliation that had to take place in order for us to get back into a right standing relationship because you can't call your mama outside of her name uh, and then expect everything to be all good uh, and holy and expect her to be all well praise the Lord no she laid hands on me but it's in a different way Um, so watch this you can't expect as a person born in sin shaped in iniquity who is at odds with God by your very nature to expect everything 
getting to be it, woo, it is wonderful and butterflies and clouds and being God are good. No, you are at odds with God because you're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You are nasty by design. And so what has to happen in order for you to get to know God is that there has to be some type of reconciliation. There's got to be somebody who says, okay, we got to just make this right. Sometimes it's the rod discipline. Um, sometimes it's the corner timeout. Uh, I've already learned that don't always work. We have to have some, you know, come in. Let me tell you something, little girl. With me. Uh, I've learned at 18 months that Nora has been born in sin uh, and shaped in iniquity. Because that little thing... No, I'm gonna teach you a no. All right, listen, um, and 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 I'm telling you, there has to be some type of reconciliation that takes place in order for us to get back right. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're trying to teach Nora to teach her. Say right now, when she act up, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're trying to teach her confession. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, here's the thing. Just because you have sinned and acknowledged it does not mean that it helps reconciliation. It's one thing to acknowledge your sin. It's another thing to be able to confess it and say, I did wrong. Wow, yeah. And then after that confession, we can move back towards reconciliation. And the way we get a chance to know reconciliation is through the person of Jesus Christ. Come to, mm -hmm. um, we look to the text, Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 15, it says this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all all things hold together. He's the head of the body and the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. I like that. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making, there it is, y'all, peace. I feel churchy, and y'all don't want to go with me. Making peace by the blood of of his cross. Jesus is the connecting factor to our imprint. Mm -hmm. yep. Here's what I'm trying to say. You can't learn about you if you don't learn about this connecting factor in the Godhead. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't get a chance to understand, well, you know what? What? I wonder why I'm like this. I mean, have y'all ever been, like, I mean, let's listen to talk straight. Like, have you ever, like, get to ask the point, you like, listen, I'm going to do better self. Self, we're going to get to bed on time. Uh, we're going we to actually, you know, we're going to drink more water. Um, we're going to walk in more. We're going to do all this stuff. And then you say we get to bed on time. It's 3.23 in the morning. Y'all trying to figure out where did hula hoops come from? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's so like, you like, why? You ask yourself, why am I like this? Like, what, what makes me uniquely me? And that's the thing. is that I believe, watch this, that every human being has in their mind this design to figure out what makes me me. Mm -hmm. Hear me, though. Every human being has the image of God and imprint on them. Yeah. Watch this. That's called general revelation. There's some things you can't know without special revelation. See, here's the thing. I've got a conscience that's called general revelation. I've got the Holy Spirit that's called special revelation. Yeah. My general revelation it tells me, man, like, I just love being outside in the outdoors. I love fishing. I love hunting. I like this. This is incredible. Like you, you, you can you can look around you immediately and begin to see. That's Romans chapter one. You get a chance to see that everything we look around has been created by God. Um, but then you have a sense to know and say the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. See, with special revelation tells you that everything I get a chance to put my behind my eyes on and behold, God created for a purpose. It's not just. I get to enjoy it. I get to enjoy it for a purpose. So I look around and I see what's all around. I see what's communicating. I see God, you're doing something so well. This is good. Uh, but God's saying, listen, I put, <laughs> I put that imprint on you to be a beeline into the question. I put that imprint on you because everybody is trying to ask the same question. What makes me uniquely me? 
<laughs> this is what I like about God. What God is trying to do is that he puts every imprint on every person with B. B is the question of what makes me uniquely me? <laughs> what God is essentially trying to do is I'm setting you up to go back to A. Mm -hmm. um, but what makes you uniquely you right here is who I uniquely am. Yeah. In order for you to actually get the true answer to this part, you've got to go back. God was setting it up in your DNA for you to be extended the gospel at this part. Well, what you, what, well, Vincent, wouldn't it sound a whole lot better to go um, forward first? Everybody want to go forward. Mm -hmm. You've got to go back to or realize where you came from mm -hmm. and from which you have come from. You came from dust. And some of us walking around like, listen, let me say this right now. Your dust ain't better than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. Listen. When you, I don't care, when you go shower, there's going to be some dirt that fall off of you. Um, amen. And you need to wash it off with you. Some of us, we, we need to do a little, you know. Some of us got a little more dirt than others, you know what I'm saying? A little extra, you know what I'm talking about. But still dirt. And God uniquely designed us so we can ask this question. Well, if I'm asking about who I am. Well, who are you? How do I get to know me? Is understanding you. Now hear me when I say this. Understanding and knowing is different. Watch this. I know Drew Brees. I know he's a quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. I know he's a pretty good quarterback. I know some facts about him. He went to Purdue University. I know he went number nine. Uh, I know he said who that a lot. Uh, I know what he looks like. Check it out. I ain't got his phone number. I don't know his kid's name. I don't know his address. I don't know his favorite snack. Uh, I don't know if he got a nickname. I don't know if he go about pool kid. Like I don't know anything else about him other than what I've seen right here. Watch this. I know general revelation. I don't know special. Mm -hmm. The problem is that most people are trying to get off the hook saying, I know about God, but you don't know God. Oh, come on, babe. In order for you to understand who you are, you can't go to a um, um, bi biology book. You can't go to a, a Google search about who is God. You've got to get to know him for yourself. Yeah. It's not just enough to hear anything about him. you got to get a chance to know him. Let me, let me come back to that in a second. So we learn about this imprint of who we are coming from the Godhead. And we just talked about Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 is that he's the image of the invisible God. Learning about who we are then comes from who he is. Now here's the last thing I've got to hurry. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 starting at verse 10. Here's what it says. These things, help me Holy Spirit, God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Help me Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. I just try to give you three quick passages to try to explain to you the uniqueness of every part of the Godhead. So if we look at the birth of Christ, uh, when we see when uh, we kind of say it like this, the Holy Spirit is the baby daddy. Watch this. When it says the Holy Spirit of God shall come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The, the Holy Spirit is the person who sparked the seed um, for Christ to be born. It happened supernaturally. Did not happen through natural relations. So the Holy Spirit is even in the process, is even in the process of giving birth to this part of God in flesh that we get a chance to know. Now watch this. Here's the best part too. Even when before, oh my God, before we get a chance to even introduce ourselves to Jesus, when Mary decides, you know what, I'm gonna go over to my cousin Elizabeth's house and go hang out with her for a little while while I'm pregnant to hang out. Like you tell me what I can be pregnant. We gonna hang out. We gonna uh, we gonna look at pictures together. We gonna hang out. So I'm gonna come to your house. And Mary comes over to Elizabeth's house and um, she realizes that hey, Jesus is uh, with you. You with child. But they don't even say anything to each other. Watch this. When Mary spoke, hmm, when Mary spoke, the baby inside of Elizabeth jumped. Mm. 
The Holy Spirit was the activator in them understanding what was happening. There's something unique going on within my belly. I feel that I know my child and something about this kid was a little bit different. Because when you spoke, something happened inside of me. When you said something, help me Holy Spirit, something happened inside of me. I realized that whatever it was that you were saying, you were entering into my life, the person of Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit let me understand that it was Jesus. The Holy Spirit helped me understand what it is that you were saying. Hear me when I say this. Some of y'all have no idea what people are speaking into your life because you're trying to see if it's Jesus without understanding there has to be a translator. Right. The Holy Spirit has to do the work of translation for you to understand it. Yeah. Even if Jesus is speaking, can the Holy Spirit be a part of the act of letting you understand what it is? You've got to understand that the Godhead uniquely gives life to who you are. So if you want to understand, how do I get, God, what are you saying to me? God, what, what do you have for me to do? Like, God, where, where are you trying to take me in life? Let's go back to point one. Mm. If I'm asking God, what are you speaking to me? I've got to come back to point one and realize, okay, Holy Spirit, I can't understand what you're saying until you translate. So, Lord, translate what you're trying to speak to my life. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to figure out, God, um, what did, why did you die for me? I've got to go back to point one. I've got to realize that before the foundations of the earth, that God had me on his mind. And if he had me on his mind from day one, then it wasn't tripping to think about him dying at day whatever else. Because from day one, he was thinking about me. So when I got to the cross, this was just another day that I was already thinking about him from day one. So when I'm asking these questions, I'm coming back to, okay, God, who are you? You've got to stop I mean, in understanding what makes you uniquely you. Stop starting here. Wow. You've got to go back. Every color. I'm getting to that next week and I'm not going, I ain't holding back Nathan. I'm telling you, every color, uniquely a color, uniquely texture, uniquely personality, uniquely you talk a lot. Uniquely, you don't say nothing at all. Uniquely, you would rather stand in a room and not have anybody in it. Uniquely, you need everybody around you for you to function. Every single part of that of you makes you a certain color, makes you a certain shape, makes you a certain texture, makes you a certain design. But every single one of those got originated from red, yellow, and blue. From God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Everything about you is wrapped up in this. You've got to start. Well, well, I'm green. Well, how do we start? Like, what shade of green do we start with to make this shade of green? No, fool. Um, blue and yellow. Y'all don't want to have church. No, you don't start with your shade. You start with the origin. You don't start with what uniquely makes it this shade of green. What makes it green? What makes me uniquely like this? No, what makes you you? If God is going to get a chance to get your attention, he's got to get your attention and figure out who he is first. Mm -hmm. You asking the wrong question. We're going to get there, but you start with the wrong question. Watch this. All of mankind starts here. Yeah. Everybody starts here. Those of us who have understood that the, watch this, the Holy Spirit has been working on us to say, okay. Because can we say this? You don't even have sense enough to go back to point A. You've got to have God's help to get you back to understanding God. You ain't even got sense enough to say, well, you know what? What makes me uniquely me? You know what? I feel like I need to figure out about God first. 
That means God was acting from over there, wrapping your mind, saying, let me help this fool real quick and pull him back over here. And what? Because at the moment that you're asking, watch this, at the moment that you're asking, well, if I need to learn about me, what makes it uniquely me, I need to learn about God. When you, when you utter those words out of your mouth, when you utter those words out of your spirit, that means God was already acting in this moment. Before you had no sense to go over here, God already got to you right here. What makes you uniquely you starts here. Ask the right questions. Because here it is. Believer, you're going to get a different understanding. Someone who understands the gospel is going to get a different understanding of what makes you uniquely you. It, it, you're, you're, going to, you're going to get blurred lines at best if you haven't given your life over the Lordship of Jesus. How do I know that? Because he's part of the Godhead. You can't make everything that's uniquely about you missing a color. Well, I, I want to know God. I, I, I even want to know the Holy Spirit. But I don't want to accept that Jesus is, is God. Okay, well, you're not going to figure out about you. You're going to be missing something. You need all three of part of what makes up you. If I don't want to accept the gospel, then I don't get a chance to understand me. Here's what I'm saying. This is going to be a fun series, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you this, this, this right now. You won't get anything I'm saying. It will sound like advice. It will be um, implementation for your personality at best, but it won't transform you. In order for you to get everything that the Lord wants to speak to you right now in this season, you got to understand this. Oh, man, that's so great, man. So, my, uh, man, my person, we took a personality test. That's incredible. So, you mean I'm like this? Like, that's, man, it's, it's blurry at best. It's blurry at best. God, God is trying to get you to understand all of him. It's going to, oh, this sounds good. It's blurry at best. My hope for you in the body of Christ, my hope for you, people made in the image of God, that before you figure out, man, what makes me me? Who is God? And hear me, I just gave you three verses. That ain't enough. <laughs> He's giving you the full counsel of Scripture. He's giving you the Holy Spirit so you can understand Scripture. He has given you life. He's given, the breath you have right now has been given to you by God. And when you understand that he gave it to you, you can then start asking the question, well, what do you want me to do with this breath? All of who you are is wrapped up in who he is. There's a sermon. All of who you are is wrapped up in who he is. Okay, I'm done. Let's pray. <clears throat> Jesus, we trust you. Oh God, we trust you. Before the foundations of the earth, God, you have established, you have established a way to a relationship with you. Father, my prayer for every person on the sound of my voice that has yet to experience that relationship with you, that God, today would be the day that they ask the question, God, who are you? God, I want to get a chance to know you. God, I have so many questions about me. I have so many questions about my deity. I have so many things I want to learn uniquely about me. But God, before I get there, God, teach me how to know you. And Father, you've told us in your word that the way we really get a chance to know you is by understanding that the person and work of Jesus Christ is what extends that reconciliation back into a right relationship with you. Father, for every person who has experienced that, we say yes and amen, and we cling to that. Father, for people who have yet to experience that and have no idea what we're talking about, God, we pray that the day, that today is the day of salvation. Father, they will respond lovingly, knowing that they will get to learn a whole lot about themselves, or they get to learn a whole lot about you. Father, may we as a church give people everything that they need towards growing in godliness.
forgiveness and learning about who you are. We may understand better who we are and then how we relate to others and who they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Circle Church of Alexandria family, as well as our guests that are tuning in from all over the world. My name is Carlos Malley. I'm the outreach pastor of the Circle Church of Alexandria, located in Alexandria, Louisiana. The Word of God teaches us to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I pray that in the midst of a pandemic and everything that's going on in your life, that you can continue to rejoice, that you can continue to be able to say thank you, God, for everything and anything that you are doing for me, to keep me, to sustain me, to watch over me. I wanted to share a few announcements of what's going on at the Circle Church this week. On Thursday, we'll meet at 6.30 to check in on each other and to study God's word together. Next Sunday, July 19th, the women will meet on Zoom to continue their study of Psalms 119, His Testimonies, My Heritage. Thank you all for continuing to support what the Lord is doing here at the Circle Church of Alexandria. There are several ways to give, by mail, online, via text, and cash app. Additionally, the church wants to update the play area for our kids. If you would like to help or can donate playground equipment, or maybe know someone who can, please email serve at the circlechurchla.com. What a wonderful word. What a wonderful way to close out in worship. I would like to close us out in a small prayer and then lead us right into the benediction. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we, we thank you for the word that went forth today. We thank you for the worship that glorified and magnified your holy name. We pray, Father, that the word landed on good ground and that we can continue our worship as we leave this place. Father, while we are not physically together, we can feel your presence and we know that the Holy Spirit is still guiding each of us. Please be with us until we meet again. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Our service has ended. Go in peace. Have a blessed week until we meet again. God bless you all.